So greetings and salutations. Welcome to another top agent interview series. Uh, we uh, do these videos to uh, document the success that we see uh, in our agency to Ford Insurance Group with agents who join to sell final expense, whether in person or with the phone. And today I have the uh, pleasure of being here with both uh, Tim Hildebrand, our telesales trainer, and Mrs. Cinnamon Burton, who has uh, just recently joined us and has a 10% conversion over the phone, which is absolutely incredible. And what we're going to be doing in this video today is really just going over uh, how she got into the business, why she chose to work with us, and um, what she's done to have such a high close rate. Just as a comparison, we think, Tim probably can back me up on this, 5% uh, conversion is fantastic. Uh, that is really good with telesales. So anything better than that is, is exceptional. 10%, mm, that's, that's awesome. So... Let's jump right into it. So, Cinnamon, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for coming on here. Let me uh, do one thing here. I kind of pin myself. There you are. Okay, cool. There you are. Cool. All right. So, uh, why don't we jump right into it? Uh, Tim, uh, say hello to the audience, too, as well. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Hey, Tim. How you doing? Thanks for being here. All right. So, Cinnamon, give us a little background on yourself and uh, why you decided to uh, get into the, in the wide world of insurance sales. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I do kind of have uh, somewhat of a salesy background, um, about two years of experience with sales. I uh, guess started off um, working remote for the most part, uh, moved into real estate, had my son, realized it was very ball and chain and required such a strong uh, physical presence. Uh, I really just wanted to be at home with him. Um, I got my license and in insurance thinking that uh, mortgage protection would, um, you know, um, pair well with the license that I already had, um, and then realized how um, mortgage protection really just pairs with the market as real estate does, you know, goes up and down, um, and, and moved over to final expense because the one thing for certain is we're all going to pass at some point. We all need uh, that protection to make sure that our loved ones don't have to endure the burden of our final expenses when the time comes. Um, and this business really allows me to still stay at home with my son and um, work the hours that, um, you know, work for me, my lifestyle. Yeah, uh, let's let's get into this a little bit. So, you know, you mentioned that you uh, have a kid and you have to, of course, be a mom and a full time worker. How do you juggle that? I think that's such an important thing to mm -hmm. clarify because uh, it's a big attraction for remote work. But, you know, yeah. you got to be dialed in, too, at the same time. So what <laughs> what's that like? Yeah, um, it's all about discipline. I wake up at 5.30, I go to the gym and start my day and prepare breakfast for us. And he wakes up around 8 or 9 a.m. And it's usually just us, um, you know, doing whatever activities I have prepared for the day until he takes his nap. He's actually taking a nap now around right. this time. And that's usually about two hours or so. I'm able to get some calls out, um, may get a sale or so within those two hours that he's asleep. And then my partner gets home around 2.30 from work. And then so it's kind of like time to debrief where we'll have dinner together, whatever the case may be. And I start work around five. So from five to nine, um, I'm usually working. So you set up, I guess you would say, like, like parameters, you know, yeah. like you got to work in, you know, and then if it's during five to nine, I'm sure it's, you know, nobody's messing with me because I'm dialed in with work kind of thing. Right. Absolutely. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. And that's great that you work that out too, because that's probably the hardest thing I think. And Tim, if you want to jump into this, I'd like your comments on this is a lot of people think, oh, I'm at home and, you know, I just lay around and put my feet up and dial and no, no, ain't no problems, but it's not quite commonly the case, is it, Tim? <laughs> no, telesales isn't just a, a luxury stay at home vacation. No, it's not. You know, um, there is probably no way to get success without calendar blocking, actually being on task if you're full time, seven hours dialing, talking to people. And uh, that includes lunches and whatnot. It's pretty clear that if you don't do that, if you don't have some kind of calendar, some organizational, some professionalism like Cinnamon's talking about, you're just going to end up doing half as much work as you think you would. Yeah, it's it's deceptively difficult, I would say, for sure. Yeah, if you're, if you're not structured. Right. right. Yeah, without the structure, it's it can actually just not work. Right. Hundred percent. Cinnamon, um, walk us through 
you chose the final expense route. Why did you decide to apply an interview with DeFord Insurance Group? What was it about what we had to offer that enticed you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I have been watching your videos on YouTube for some time now. And, you know, I wasn't sure, um, you know, I just didn't know, um, you know, anyone at your agency. But um, a lot of the videos, um, I guess, really sat with how I felt um, about mentorship in the industry and um, how you're almost set up for failure, <laughs> you know, just joining an agency, having no clue about where to go or what to do. Um, I applied. I, I, I liked how thorough your process was. It seems like you really do a good job of filtering your candidates uh, to join your agency. So that was a green flag for me. Um, right. From there, everything was just so thorough. Um, how to go about contracting, who to get in touch with. Um, training was just so detailed. And I just loved every bit of it uh, that you put together. Um, and you know, mentorship was absolutely important. But I, I can't remember whose video it was that I was watching on YouTube um, where he was talking about selling Medicare. And that's something that I eventually want to um, work towards so that I can have that uh, residual income coming in as I plan to homeschool my son in the future. Right. Yeah. And for, for sake of clarity, if you're new here, we absolutely support Medicare, not as a first option to sell with the long term, simply because it pays less. It's harder to cash flow. Final expense is great to learn the ins and the outs of the business. And then eventually to get into Medicare as kind of a second uh, one two punch, if you will, because many of your clients are on Medicare and you can help them get a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare supplement plan. Um, like you had said, Cinnamon, training is everything, right? At least it is to us. For, for Tim and I, um, I can speak for Tim. I think it's, it's so important to train people, because, especially with telesales. It is, it is of, of, of the two ways to sell, face to face or telesales, it's the most difficult. Um, there's so much more you have to know, I think. And so to me, mentorship is not even optional. Can you walk us through what training was like and, and the kind of impact it had on you to write 10% of your leads as, as a business, which again, is a great, it's a great uh, feat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think the mentorship really um, held me accountable in a way I wanted to be able to hop on the phone with Tim and share my success with him. And um, I almost like, it's like our conversations. It's not like he was, I don't want to say like, not like he was coaching me, but it was like, he's more like of a motivational speaker. Like he's really in your head. Like there's nothing you can't do um, when you speak to Tim. And I think it really just got me fired up to um, get out there and make those calls, regardless of what they said to me. I'm like, yeah, Tim's right. It, it's just them over the phone. Like, what can they, what can they do? Um, you know, I had some reservations about triple dialing, um, and he really pushed that on me. And I saw that, you know, just following the system, it all works. If, if they don't answer, they don't answer. If they get upset that you call them more than three times, Hey, I'm just trying to deliver the information that you requested. And right. if they're still upset about it, I mean, probably they weren't going to buy from you in the first place. Some will, some won't. So what you just keep going. Right. So, right. Awesome. Tim, uh, speak on that. What Talk about your philosophy of training. A lot of it's changed here recently. Uh, give the audience kind of a, a background of kind of how you think now about training and, and, and what, you, what you put into place to make it work so well now. Yeah, so the philosophy is that we need you to be taking a role in it. And as much as I can do, I'll do. We're, Dave and I are going completely outrageously overboard to try to make you successful, but I can't make that happen unless you participate. And so from the beginning, we have you participating from the day one. Before you even talk to me, you're participating. And then after that, if you make it, we put you in the small groups where every single day for an hour, we listen to calls, we look at the metrics, make sure again that you're doing it. Are you putting out the dials? Are you putting out the, how, how is that looking? What exactly does that mean? What do the metrics even mean? We go into all of that. We just analyze it in detail, like Cinnamon knows every single morning until you're finally conditioned to go like, I know what that means now. I know what that means now. I see, I need to get a little bit more here. I, I'm falling off the cliff here. Or I need to fix my technology. I can see that in the metrics. And then mostly it's just drill, drill, drill on the opener, the why and the problem because that's where the sale is made. The sale is actually made there. And, and, and hmm, probably 90% of people will absolutely gloss over that, no matter what they saw in a video, no matter what they heard us say, 
they'll gloss over it when they get on the phone. They won't get a real why, they won't get a real problem set. They won't ex examine that really with the person. And so they basically don't get sales. So I've, we're with them now for weeks if needed. If they're making sales for weeks to make sure that they get the, the right real reason why they're making sales and they can exploit those reasons on purpose every other call. And so when they're doing that, then we graduate them to just basically let's, let's stay motivated, keep going. Let's put out enough dials because now you know what you're doing on the phone. You can get a little bit of that on the, on the videos, but you really need the drilling for weeks on yeah, telesales sure. at least. Drilling has been such a critical aspect into improving results of our agents. I'd, I'd like you to hit on something real quick, Tim. If this is really for the new people here, and 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 if, if there's one, I think, piece of training to take away from this, it would be this. You know, many people, if you're on YouTube, you know, if you do any sales training searches, most of what you're going to see is closing, you know, how to overcome X, Y, Z objection, which is important. But you just said, which I agree with, it's the why that is the most important. And and agents gloss over this. First of all, what is the why? And why is it important and really cornerstone to making the sale? Yeah, so the, it's the why and the problem. What Dave's talking about is, is both of those combined. So there, there's no reason for us to even be speaking if you don't have a, a why are you even talking about the end of your life? What happened? Is it the funeral? Is it... Um, hospital scare, scary thing you heard from a friend who had a funeral. It's okay. Whatever it is, something freaked you out and made you think about final expense and your own death and, and who that might affect and, and needing to take care of it on insurance policy. So people don't always willingly tell you that, but they need to, at, you need to get that out of them. And then the next thing you'll have to do in the why section is get the problem established. And this is where it's, I think, really sold is that it's, think about it this way in music you play a chord and everything's beautiful as if you play one note that's detuned or out of that chord all of us go Ugh, because none of us want to hear a, a bad note you need to resolve that back into the chord right but if it's unresolved it's just a mistake if you just hit a bad note we are all sitting there in tension waiting for you to resolve it or we're going to go Ugh. okay so you in that's the human mind doing that. Now we're going to speak to the human mind in sales. Same mind, same need for resolution of a problem, mm -hmm. right? The note that's outside of the cord is a problem that's not solved. And we're all waiting with tension. It's called building tension. We're waiting with tension for that to be solved. If it doesn't, we think it's a problem. So we give them a, we evaluate the real problem to its depths. And we want to see not just, oh, the, the family is going to have trouble paying for it. No, how how are they going to have trouble? What are they going to do? You don't know what they're going to do? Okay, let's let's think about a few things they could do. You get them to say a few things, and then we want to see the consequence of that. The real problem is the consequence. It's like, look, they have to get a second job. Do they have kids? Do their kids have kids? So they have grandkids now, and they're going to get a second job to pay your bill, and they're not going to be able to spend time with their grandkids? Really? That sounds like a problem, Ms. Jones. We need to do something about that. And I don't give them any kind of re resolution. I just move on down the script. <laughs> Unresolved. The problem has now been established. It's very clear. There's going to be impact in their family. And I just say, you know what? Let's. That sounds like a real problem. Let's see what we can do about that. But I don't say, look, I'm going to take care of you. You're going to be fine. Don't worry. We'll solve that. Everything will be fine. I want an unresolved problem because people will go for the resolution. So we've right. made the sale because they're trying to solve it now that they realize that there's a, a certain future. And, and we all, we're just evaluating the truth, by the way. Right. We will die. It does cost money and someone's paying for it. And if you don't, it will be them. So what will that do to them? Right. And, and, and the thing is, this isn't high pressure guys. This is, no. this is problem solving and the people know they've got a problem, but like, it's just human nature. Sometimes we just ignore the problem, right? With the idea that maybe it'll go away or we'll just right. procrastinate. So if anything, guys, to take from this, whether you work with us or someone else's, you got to get to the problem without identifying the problem and agitating it. Very few people make moves uh, to do anything about it. Now, Cinnamon, a uh, question for you. Um, a lot of agents, uh, one of their first things getting started is leads. 
uh, where are the good leads, how do the leads work, et cetera. Can you kind of give us some perspective on the leads that you're working and uh, kind of what you've experienced calling them? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so currently, uh, with the amount of time that I have to dedicate, um, I get about 50 leads a week. Um, I usually have them start my lead order on Monday, and I'm usually um, done with them around Thursday. Friday, I go through with like a fine tooth comb to see if I miss any, uh, didn't get to sell any. Um, but yeah, it's usually just the 50. Um, those leads, uh, they're all, uh, I guess, generated leads from Facebook. Um, that I get through a vendor that you all recommend it. And, you know, I, I, I've i worked with maybe about two different lead vendors. I really like this one. Uh, this is the second one that I've, you know, tried that you all recommended. And honestly, I don't think that there's a such thing as a bad lead. I think if I can get them on the phone, then, you know, I can talk to them. I don't have the same impact as being able to go to someone's house and uh, sit on their couch and, you know, be within their presence as, you know, face-to-face -face agents do. So how can I connect with them? The only way I can connect um, by being a telesales agent is by listening. If I hear a dog in the background, if I hear kids screaming, if I hear, you know, something on the television, if I hear them say, did you, honey, did you put that in the oven? Oh, what are you having for dinner? You know, I, I, I try to find ways to connect with them. I think that's what makes all the difference. Uh, with yeah, the more stuff. like an authentic type of connection is what yeah. we're trying to establish, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the the, the old-fashioned rapport building, you know, <laughs> talking five or 10 minutes about the weather just ain't going to cut it. You know, you got to think <laughs> on your feet what you're doing very well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, question from Elaine. Um, is working a split shift like early mornings and evenings uh five to nine a good option. So I mean, your perspective, then Tim, you can jump in. Yeah. Um, I say do what works for you. If, if that's all you have to commit, I probably on the East coast five to nine, um, you know, I'd say five, I don't think anyone's going to answer at 5. AM. And I think the earliest we can call is 8. AM. Um, but if you're setting up your day and you're organizing and you're maybe doing product knowledge, then absolutely five to nine. And then evenings would work. What do you think, Tim? Uh, I think I think they were asking five to nine evenings. They just said like a, but yeah. So oh. part time, um, part time is very difficult. So Cinnamon's beating all of the numbers here. She's not just doing better than the full timers. She's doing better than ninety eight percent of the part timers. So she's really doing a great job. So if you're gonna if you're gonna split your time like that, there's a there's an aspect in telesales called speed to lead. If you don't get to those lead fast, somebody else is going to sell them. That, pers that person, that consumer is ready to talk. They made the lead. They want someone to call them now or by today, this morning when they wake up. And so first to contact, first to contract. You know, you, you got to get straight in there. So when you if you split your time up like that, you have leads that might come in during that downtime. It's okay. Cinnamon's making it work. You can make it work, but you're going to have to be really good practice, 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 and then just go for broke. Yeah. And, and, and the follow up here, the, the person said, Elaine said full-time hours. I, you know, my, my take on it is like, okay, let's say you work eight to 12, right. And then come back and work five to nine uh, in theory. And it does work in, in, in a, for some people, but it's very difficult. Just understand that my opinion is the nature of remote sales anyway, is that, you're at your home, you've got distractions. And these are just realities, not negativity, you know, and you've got to learn how to deal with it. Um, and as long as you can do that, um, the split shift doesn't make the difference. It's just, you got to stay disciplined and, and, and be consistent with it. It's just like all things in life, you know, it's, there's really no secrets. It's just an effective, um, you know, following through on what your commitments are. Right. So uh, I think it can be done but you just have to be more disciplined than the other person, right? I think that's what it really comes down to. Yeah, if she's talking about a full-time hours total. I, I feel happier about that. I mean, Sam is kind of doing a split shift too, you know? So it's definitely functional. Again, it just comes down to, you're going to miss some easy layup sales just because you don't pick up the phone. So in that in that in-between, could, right. could you just pick up the phone for the ones that come in? Just try that too, where it's a split shift, but then if a lead comes in, you'll get it within five minutes. You'll do a lot better that way. Right, right. Awesome. 
Well, very good. Uh, let me go ahead and do one more thing here, and then we shall wrap it up. So, ladies and I gentlemen, should, I should mention because I want to brag on it a little bit. Sure, so, please, Cinnamon, please. Cinnamon got like one sale before we started the uh, the group training, and then she got she was closing at like ten percent. I, I don't. I think there's a correlation. She'll tell us. But then also in just two full time weeks of work, she's done nine thousand one hundred and twenty five AP. That's awesome. Very good. Hard time. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is it over here. Cinnamon, thank you so much for your time, Tim, as well. Guys, if you're interested in, in joining an agency actually cares about you and your development, DeFord Insurance Group is where it's at. Uh, all you need to do is go to davidduford.com forward slash FAQ to read up on what we do and then to apply at davidduford.com forward slash apply. Uh, we do have an application interview process because we don't take everybody. We want to make sure it's a good fit, like Cinnamon said earlier, because we really care about working with the right agents that are, are, are were an equal fit uh, to work together. So uh, check that out if you're interested. We do telesales. We do face-to-face -face telesales, um, buying your own leads, face-to-face, -face, either buying your leads or generating uh, free leads for you. And uh, thanks a lot for being here. Y'all take care.